Hello, I'm Atuba Judge, and I bless God for this new week. Let's pray, Father, in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. I declare that the gate of this week is opened to us. I declare in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, everything you have written in heaven concerning us this week is being fulfilled here on earth and in our lives. Thank you for the victory, Lord, that we are going to experience and enjoy this week. Hallelujah. Because you watch over us and you will not abandon us to shame. Thank you, Holy Spirit. You have been sent to guide us into all truth and that's exactly what you are doing. We acknowledge that today, that we are being guided into all truth. We will not walk in a lie throughout this week. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Thank you, precious Lord. And I pray for those that are thinking, Lord, of traveling to one place or the other today. And this week until the end of the year. I declare, Lord, in this season that the roads are safe. The airspace are safe. Thank you, Holy Spirit, for your watch over everyone. Hallelujah. You fill everyone's heart with peace in this season. Thank you for the influence of your spirit upon all men. Men are doing what is right because of the influence of your spirit in their lives. Especially favoring the children of the kingdom. Hallelujah. Thank you, precious Lord. In Jesus' name. And today, we open our hearts to receive your truths. It will change us. It will transform our minds as we submit to your word. In Jesus' mighty name, amen. Praise God. Now, we've been talking about living the life. And, and, and I started this series from Hebrews chapter 11, verse 6. It's for without faith. It is impossible to please God. And then we identified something about faith. Faith has to do, it has a lot to do with believing. See, faith has a lot to do with believing. So if you don't believe right, and believe in what? Believing that God is. For it says, for he that comes to God must believe that God is. And that he is a rewarder of those who diligently seek him. And I showed you how, how does God reward your believing? He rewards it with faith. What is faith? Faith is his word he gives to you and your response to it. Praise God. So God gives you his word and then your response to it is the completion of faith. Now God can give you his word. If you don't respond to it, faith is not complete yet. Now you see, it came to you. But if you don't act on it, you will not see the result. And then soon you begin to doubt whether it was God or it wasn't God. The word of God came to you. And that's faith. So you take hold of that word and act on it. And then we got talking about our hearts. See, because believing has to do with your heart. For Romans 10, 10 says, For with the heart, man believes. With the heart, man believes believes and then last week we got talking about the, the the heart the state of your heart because see if your heart is not perfect before god you're gonna have troubles believing in god if you have the wrong information stored up in your heart now that wrong information can may have even come from church wrong teachings and i've said this before wrong teaching doesn't have to do a lot with a a, a pastor who sets out to deceive. A, an honest pastor can be teaching the wrong stuff. It matters where he gets it from. Now that's why there's a, there's a allow me to use this word, not, not in an insulted manner, but, but just as it is truth. There is a foolishness in preachers looking for what to preach. It is foolishness. You see, if you're called of God to preach, number one, he will give you a message. Number two, he will give you utterance for the message. And number three, he will give you the anointing for the message. 
So you don't think, oh, I'm going for this service, I don't even know what to preach. And then you carry, um, you carry your Bible, or you look for books, or you look for tapes, and you start listening. Now, you, you can do all that, but see, let me tell you this. The clarity of what you're going to speak on must be from the Lord. As a preacher, your number one assignment is to minister to the Lord. And then you will now minister for the Lord. What does that mean? Anytime you stand to minister, make sure what you are saying is what God has commanded you, not what minister so-and-so preached, or not what I heard in one meeting I went for two, two days. Now, you can, you can learn things from there, but make sure when you set out to speak, you have received command from the Lord to speak on what you are talking about. For example, what I'm sharing with you, the book, the root of it is from the dealings of the Spirit of God with me. So as a preacher, if you don't have those dealings with the Spirit of God, then you, you are not in ministry at all. You are not. You are just trying to talk to people for whatever reasons that, that, that you have. See. So now I said, the wrong teachings most of them come from such places. People who will not wait on the Lord to receive words from him. People who will be looking, scouting out for what to preach. So they are, they are looking, oh, what will I say that will excite the congregation today? Come on now, <laughs> oh, praise God. Now that, is, that is wrong. It's foolish actually. It's foolish in the sight of God. You don't look for message to preach. I never have looked for message to preach, praise God. Why? Because I just need to ask the Lord, Lord what's in your heart concerning this meeting? And he begins to tell me. He begins to stir my heart up. He begins to show me direction. And that's how it works. And then you know after that meeting, you have done the will of God. Praise God. So, so I said, your heart may have some wrong teaching in it. And when that is happening or when that happens or when, when you have such in your heart, it will affect your believing. I give you an example last week about, you know, someone, you know, even news that you, whatever you let to allow, sorry, whatever you allow into your heart. So we, we began to talk about how to guard your heart. And then, and then we're looking at Proverbs chapter 4 and verse 23. And, and, and we are going to be dealing on the heart this week also. Now it says, verse 23, Proverbs for chapter 4. It says, keep your heart with all diligence. It, it, listen, it's a command. Now, this was David instructing his son Solomon. I've told you this before. The book of Proverbs from chapter 4 to chapter 8 or, or part of chapter 9, those were the words of David to Solomon. More, more like Solomon was sharing his notes. You see, that's why you hear him say, my father taught me. He was just sharing his notes from what his father taught him. So he, David taught him this. This is uh, very important. We we'll talked about that last week. It says, keep your heart with all diligence. Keep it. Old King James says, guard it. You know, that the guard sounds more, uh, you, know, you know, forceful. Guard your heart with all diligence. Why? For out of it, out of what? Out of your heart springs the issues of life. Every issue you will have to deal with in life comes out from your heart. Let me tell you something. It doesn't matter what life has thrown at you. It doesn't matter what anyone has done to you in life. You know, sometimes you hear people say, I, I, I know who I would have been if not for what so and so did to me. I know who I would have been. I know the plans my dad had for me, or for us, but it's just that, you know, when we're about to set out, my dad lost his job, someone lied against him. If that had not happened, I know I, I, know I would have schooled abroad because my dad was ready. You know, people talk like that. I, I know if I had married that person, I know what I would have been. No, sir. You want to hear the truth? Whatever you would have been that you are not has nothing to do with all those things that you mentioned. It all has to do with your heart shutting down from fulfilling those things that you should have fulfilled. If you were meant to go to the best school and then your dad lost his job, you see, the coming to say, you know, I've lost my job, so... 
all those plans we have, we, we just have to readjust. And no, sir. No. You see, that, the, the, the information that you have lost your job sent something into your heart. And what did you do? You shut the gates of possibilities in your heart. And then you told yourself, without that job, there is no way we're going to achieve this. But who said that? And then you began to shut the doors. You began to shut the doors. And then you said, let's do this one that we can do. It wasn't God that caused the problem. It wasn't the devil that caused the problem. It is you that shut down your heart. And even now, I'm telling you the truth, even now, that's why I'm bringing this word to you. Even now, right now as you're listening to me, if you will just repent, and say, repent, I, I didn't do anything wrong. You see, that's the problem. When we say repent, you, all you're thinking about is sin. You know, I have sinned. I have, I have. Hey, the fact that you shut the gates of your heart to possibilities is a sin. And you need to repent from it. The fact that even you as a father, the fact that you told your children that, look, guys, I, I, I lost my job. So because I lost my job, we all have to adjust in this house. So, so that car or that, that stuff I was supposed to get for you, I can't get it anymore. This thing I'm supposed to do for you, I can't do it anymore. So we just have to adjust. And, and the whole children said, okay, well, you know that we love you. We understand. So we, we, are, we are willing to adjust. Now the father has the head. You shut down your heart and then you shut down the heart of your children. It's an error. Now, that's where repentance needs to start from. You say, what, 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 would, what should I have done? Where is the Lord Jesus Christ in your life? You didn't ask him. You see, first of all, all those dreams you had, were they inspired by him or were they inspired by your neighbor? You know, sometimes, you know, you know parents, look, ah, I want my children to have the best. So why, why do you want them to have the way? See, you see this one, his child, this is my brother, or this is my cousin, or this is my, you know, their children are in good school. My children must be in a very good school. They, they, ah, they, cannot, they cannot say they are doing better than my children. Come on now, come on. You know, I was thinking on thought a few days ago, and, 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 and you know, it's so amazing. I think I read an article and I began to think how true it is. You know, people make a lot of money, send their children to the best school, send them abroad, send them everywhere. And then the poor send their children to the government schools or no school at all. And those ones turn out to become gangsters. Those ones turn out to become um, Hogs and, and bad people. Now, now these good these children. Now these good children who have been well trained now come back and then they now depend on the bad people, the thugs, you know, and, and things like that to to clear the way for them. Because th those ones now begin to those ones now are the ones running things on the ground. And you now come and depend on them. They now tell you, look, for us to execute this thing, you, we would need to bring you know so so amount of money. They turn out to be the ones who, no job, nothing, so they go into kidnapping. And then they kidnap you and you bring all your money and you pay to them. Funny thing about life, right? <laughs> Praise God. Now, now, what am I saying to you? It's not about what other people are doing. It's about what God wants you to do. You see your children? You see your children? They will turn out right. If you will keep faith with the Lord, not on your bank account. I'm telling you the truth. Sit down and begin to invest. If you are a good man, sit down and begin to invest in your, of your goodness in your children. And let me tell you this. The best way to invest in your children, <laughs> it will shock you. It is what? Words. So words? Yeah, words. Words coming from your heart. If you truly are genuine. That is the greatest investment you can give to your children. Not money, not the best schools. You can send them to the best school, you can send them to the local school according to the ability that you have or God has given to you. But you see, for those children to turn out right, there are words inside of you that must be poured out in them. 
if you are not doing this and you are sending them out to the best school, get ready, they will turn out to be failures. Thank you, Lord Jesus. <laughs> Our time is up already today. And we've not really entered into what we want to talk about. But you see, these words are for you. Take hold of it and be blessed. I'll see you tomorrow. Bye-bye.